to you all and um can you believe it we have come to the last of my uh daily lessons <laughs> of course tomorrow we have spellathon and we will continue to have spellathon um every friday until the 17th of july so you've got your spelling tests all sorted out for the rest of the summer term but this is the last lesson in this style it's absolutely crazy um so big thank you to all of you that were there at the beginning and all of you that have joined on along the way and to those of you that are here today Right, so uh, if you are new to English Live on the very last day, that's absolutely fine, welcome. You may want to download uh, this document, 
which is uh, the, uh, you can download it from the English Live Resources Facebook page. And uh, there are six different tasks that you can do after the lesson that will extend and consolidate your learning. So you've got lots of fun things to do after the lesson today. And it's also the place where you can upload videos and pictures of the work that you're doing for everybody else to see and congratulate you on your effort. So please do uh, pop your work up there. And even if you are watching these lessons in the future and they're not live and you still want to download the task sheets and do the fabulous tasks and put your work on the Facebook group, it's still very much you're still very welcome to do that. It will still be very well received. And um, I will keep checking in there frequently to comment on work throughout the next few weeks and months and beyond. <laughs> OK, so let's do some shout outs before we get on with our starter activity today. So uh, let's see. Hello to Reese from North Wales. Hello to Harry, who is 12 and George, who is 14 and they're from Manchester. Hello, chaps. Hello to Judith, who is seven, and she's from Watford, and she loves all of my lessons. Thank you very much, Judith. Uh, Rosa, you are 11 today. Happy birthday. And extra well done for doing an English lesson on your birthday. That is awesome. Hello to Lena Boren and her puppy, Elsie. Hello to Jasmine. And a big shout out to Tilly in, and Rafa in Liverpool, as always. Hello to Frankie and Nancy, who are 11, that love the lessons. Excellent girls. And uh, Johnny in London, hello to you. Hello to Layla, who is 11, who thinks I'm the best. That's really nice of you to say, Layla. And Layla, your work is absolutely awesome, so you keep going. Uh, hello to Dia, who is nine in Reading. And I know Dia was very much looking forward to a vocabulary stretcher lesson today. Hello to William and Yasmin, who are watching with their baby brother, Isaac, who is five months old. Well, big hello to Isaac, starting him young. That's what I like. And uh, Florence misses her friends Evie, Bella and Adelaide and Ruby, Sienna and Sophie from school. I'm sure they all miss you too. Hello to Emily and Sophia. Hello to Andy, who would like a shout out for his daughter, Martha. Big shout out for you, Martha. Hello to Daisy and Poppy, to Anna, who is nine in Sutton, and to Jacob in uh, Heath and Reach. Jacob, local lad, just around the corner, wonderful. And a massive hello to Logan, Ollie, Noah, Lily, Sienna, Isla and Evie at Pixbrook. I hope you're having a wonderful day and um, make sure you go and give Mr. Kingman lots of trouble after this lesson. Right, uh, let's get started with our starter activity today. So every lesson we do a quick warm up activity just to get our brain muscle moving and uh, to uh, get the juices flowing and prepare us for doing a little bit of work. So this is only a 20 to 30 minute lesson, okay? But we do need our brains working for it and you will need your brain to be able to utilize what you learn in this lesson afterwards. Okay, so I'm gonna slide along my very technologically advanced uh, clipboard, board, which is <laughs> just a clipboard attached to a, a broken lamp on a chair. <laughs> so here we go. Today's starter activity. How many words can you think of that are related to the word red? Okay. So when you think of the word red, what else do you think of? Come up with as many ideas as you can. You can put them in the live chat. You can drop them down in a brainstorm. You can shout them out of the screen, or you can just have a little dance for a minute like I will. Okay. Good luck. Play. <laughs>
Tomatoes, strawberries, hearts, cherries. Fabulous. The YouTube sign. Yes, well done. Hi, Seamus. Pause. Okay, well done. Hopefully now your brain is all juiced up and ready for our vocabulary stretcher lesson. So in this lesson today, you will learn some new words. I'm going to tell you how to pronounce them properly. Hopefully you will learn how to spell them. Um, but most importantly, you will learn how to use those words, okay? So I've tried to pick words that are not commonly used, um, but they're not complicated. They don't have complicated meanings. So hopefully everybody that's participating in this lesson, because I know we've got some lovely Key Stage 1 learners joining us today. Hopefully um, you will all be able to take something away with you from this lesson. So the first word we're going to look at today is this one. OK, so what I've done here is put the correct spelling of the word up here, but also how you would pronounce it underneath. OK, so. What does this word mean? Contumacious. Do you know what it means? I'm going to give you 30 seconds to uh, discuss what you think it might mean um, or to come up with your own random definition. Um, or if you're able to and you want to and you've got your parents' permission, you can quickly look it up on the internet, okay? Good luck. Play. Contumacious. You can't wait for their affirmation. You can't wait for their approval. You can't wait for their support. Sometimes you just gotta run and look behind you and say, everybody who wants to run, run, but I can't stop running because you're not cool. Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your dream. Just Louise says it's, it's a very long way. word. It is you a very long word. They're not all that long this lesson. You can't stop chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know you can do it, you're gonna have to do it all by yourself. Any day. ideas? Mark says, no, nope. no idea. <laughs> you can just come up with your own definition. Okay, the storyteller says, does it mean greedy? A person um, or some something that eats a lot? That's a nice idea. Starting to become unconscious. Okay, I can see what you've done there. That's clever. Pause. Okay. Contumacious means stubbornly or willfully disobedient towards authority figures. Um, so in simple English, that means um, refusing to do what you're told by um, people that are in charge. So maybe disobeying what your teachers are asking you to do. <laughs> okay, uh, really quickly, you've got 30 to 40 seconds to try and use this word in a sentence. You can type it into the live chat, jot it down on your paper, or just shout them out at the screen, have a practice, um, see how it sounds and see if you can use it in a sentence. It is an adjective, so it's a describing word. Okay, good luck. Play. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, lovely. Pause. So, uh, lots of you are coming up with really good examples in the live chat. I did pre-prepare one for you. Um, so, my one is she was a consummatious student but loved to participate in school life. So using the word in that way is saying that this student, um, she doesn't like to do what she's told, but she does like to participate in school life, okay? So um, let's move on to some more words. I've got two words for you this time. I've got uh, curmudgeon which I've got a feeling might be as popular as Boondoggle was last week. Um, curmudgeon and incendiary. So you can see here I've broken down how to pronounce each of those words. So curmudgeon and incendiary. Can you work out what they mean? If you're not sure, you can just make up a random definition, okay? Have a bit of fun with it. 30 seconds off you go, good luck. Play. <laughs> If you don't want to create a definition, you can just practice saying the words. Practice how they sound. Practice using them. Is Carmudgeon stubborn? Mm, not quite. The Liam and Rose show said a bad person. Designed to cause fires. That's a really clever idea. I like what you did with that one. A greedy pigeon. <laughs> okay, we're getting really creative now. I love this. Well done. Pause. So, here are the definitions. Curmudgeon, an angry or menacing person. So possibly one of the teachers that the uh, student in the my previous sentence um, was contumacious towards. Um, it might have been a curmudgeon of a teacher. <laughs> Uh, so uh, incendiary means intended to stir things up. And for those of you that said um, that it might have related it to the word flammable, it does have a similar meaning. It's like igniting something and setting it off. And that's what people do when they stir, stir things up. OK, so we've got curmudgeon and incendiary. And I would like you now to come up with a sentence that uses both those words. If you're a key stage one learner and you feel like that's a bit too tricky for you, you can just come up with a quick sentence using each or even just one of them. And if you prefer, you can just say the words at the screen and again, practice using them and what they sound like. OK, good luck and off you go. Play. Can't wait to be what you become. You can't wait for their affirmation. You can't wait for their approval. You can't wait for their support. I love how some of you um, who have used the ideas from the portmanteau lesson on Monday to try and determine what these words might mean. That's a really clever thing to do and it's really useful when you're trying to work out what a new word means. You can't stop chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know you can do it, you're going to have to do it all by yourself. Pause. Okay, so whilst some of you are still... Um, coming up with sentences, I'm going to give a few shout outs. So uh, let's see. Uh, Keris, who is 10 in Hazelmere, would like a shout out for her dad because it's his birthday. Happy birthday to Keris's dad. Hello to Rosie from Dorset. Hello to Elise. Big shout out to you. Hello, Barney, who is 10. Hello, Nicola from Middlesbrough. Shout out to Dan from Swindon. Hello to Simran, who is 11 in South Wales. Hello to Alice and Will. 
A uh, big shout out to Esme, who is 10 in Fiddleworth, Ellie and Max in Barwell, um, and shout out to Francesca Gray. And also Evie, who is nine in Northampton, who is with her tortoise. <laughs> And uh, Naomi and Melissa, Violet, who is nine in Kent, um, Clements and Stellan, hello to you guys. And um, Anisha and Arian in St Albans, big hello to you. And um, Maya, who is 11 in Edinburgh, big hello to you too. Thanks everybody for joining in today. You're going to know some really impressive words by the end of this short lesson. Okay, so hopefully you've got a sentence using both of these words. It was a bit of a challenge. Um, I have done one too. And my one is, he was a curmudgeon of a man with an incendiary attitude towards his neighbors. Okay, so I'm saying that he was an angry and menacing man um, and he had an attitude towards his neighbors in which he liked to stir things up. Okay, so hopefully you've been able to use those words accurately in a sentence too. And if you're not entirely sure, um, check with your adult after the lesson. Okay, so the next task is slightly different. In this task, I'm going to give you three words and three definitions, and I'm gonna ask you to try and match those up. So, here we have them. Let me try and separate them a little bit more. Um, I will turn it in just a moment. So we have um, amenable, discombobulated, another one I think that might be as popular as boondoggle was, <laughs> and eloquence. Okay, all three of them are objectives, so they're describing words. Um, one of them means fluent or persuasive in speech or written word. One of them means confused, and one of them means open and responsive to suggestions. So I would like you to try and match these up. If it's easier for you jotting it down, if you're not very quick at writing, you can just um, number them one, two, three, and A, B, C, and do it that way. Um, I'll get a marker pen out and uh, match them up afterwards. So I'll give you about a minute for this one. Good luck, off you go. Okay. the answers to this just a quick reminder that on Monday although I might be finished with my daily uh, 11 o'clock lessons on Monday I will be starting chapter and verse which is um, my weekly vlog for all things English so I hope that you'll come along and join me for that that's at 6 30 p.m live on YouTube on Monday and um, if you haven't already uh, there's a subscribe button somewhere along here make sure you do subscribe to my channel so when all of my exciting projects are coming out that you don't miss any of them and you can can use them to your full advantage to really improve uh, your, the quality of your English. So let's see, amenable, what does it mean? If you are amenable, you are open and responsive to suggestions. Okay. Uh, discombobulated. I used to love this word when I was at school. Discombobulated. It's when you are feeling confused. Okay. And eloquent, well, there's only one option left, isn't there? So it's when you are fluent or persuasive in speech or written words. So people that can talk the talk and write the right, those people are eloquent. Okay, if you've got three out of three, give yourself a pat on the back. If you've got two out of three, give yourself a pat on the back. And if you've got one or none out of three, give yourself a pat on the back. Just giving it a go is really good. So well done. 
Right, uh, we're gonna move on now. What time are we at? Yes, we've got enough time. Let me take these ones down. Da, 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 da. Okay. So two more words. So we really are cranking this up today. I think we had six words in the last vocabulary stretcher. This one today, we have got seven. So you're gonna go away with seven new words. Uh, these two here, epiphany and exonerate. Okay, exonerate or exonerated um, is one of the words in the spell font tomorrow. So you could even use this time now to brush up on that one. So what is an epiphany? An epiphany is a sudden moment of realization or great insight and exonerate is to free someone or something from blame. So I'm gonna ask you to do a variety of things. You can pick one of these tasks or all of these tasks. <coughs> I would like you to use epiphany in a sentence, to use exonerate in a sentence. And if you can do that and you're confident, then I would like you to create a sentence that uses both of those words at the, to, in the same sentence accurately, okay? Um, you can just speak your sentences. You don't necessarily need to write them down. And if that just all sounds a little bit too tricky for you, like I said before, just practice saying those words, letting those words roll off your tongue, epiphany and exonerate. OK, good luck. Play. Holy Squad. <laughs> she had a sudden epiphany. Well done, Montina. <laughs> Our lives are full of epi epiphanies. Well done, Nevan. She's with the childminder today. I might be able to bring her in tomorrow. He was exonerating someone when he had an epiphany. Why am I doing this? He thought. Fantastic, Adrian. Well done. Really good. Pause. Okay. So, uh, this lesson we have covered amenable incendiary, discombobulate, contumacious, exonerate, curmudgeon and eloquent. What a fab collection of words. You are going to be able to take these words away with you and sound really super smart. So um, before I give you one final task to do in this lesson, <coughs> Mummy English has been super busy collecting in all of your shout outs. So um, hello to Emma who is 10 in Verwood. Hello to Natasha, who is 10 in year six in Chorley. Hello to Erin Small, who is 10. Hello um, to Alice's friends in Bovey Tracy. Um, she really misses them all. So a big shout out to Alice's friends. Hello to Imogen in Warrington. She's sad that the lessons are ending. I'm a bit sad too, Imogen, but fear not. We're going to have great fun over at Chapter and Verse. Um, hello to Catherine from um, Mears Ashby. She would like a shout out for her mum, who has been amazing in lockdown. So Catherine's mum, well done for being so amazing in lockdown. She really, really appreciates it. Uh, hello to Neve, who is seven in Sutton. And Evie Tiller wants to thank me for my lessons. Well, Evie, it's been an absolute pleasure. It absolutely, absolutely has. So the last task of the last daily lesson. 
<laughs> okay, um, I'm going to ask you now to try and be as creative as possible and um, create a sentence with as many of these words as you can. You don't need to get silly and try to include all seven words, um, but if you can write a really good quality sentence that has two, three or four or more of the words, uh, then that is absolutely fantastic. Remember, you don't need to write them down. You can just say your sentence. Um, and again, if you're feeling a bit unsure, if you're a younger learner, maybe you just want to practice saying the words a little bit, that's absolutely fine too. So I'm going to give you about a minute and a half to do this, okay? Good luck. Play. <laughs> You can't wait for their affirmation. You can't wait for their approval. You can't wait for their support. But sometimes you just gotta run and look behind you and say, everybody who wants to run, run. But I can't stop running because you're not running. Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your dream just because somebody won't like you. Know you can't stop believing in yourself just because somebody in your life won't believe in you. You can't stop chasing your dreams of your life just because when you know you can do it, you're gonna have to do it all by yourself. Hello, Eloise and Maddie Frost. Big shout out to you both. Um, some of you putting your sentences in the live chat, but mostly <laughs> you're all just saying, Bertie, Bertie, Pip, and I can't believe it's the last lesson. I can't either. Um, but it isn't entirely the last lesson. This isn't the very last time you're going to see me. Tomorrow I will be doing the Spellathon, and I will be doing the Spellathon every Friday until Friday, the 17th of July. And Monday night, chapter and verse. So you can all come and join in on Monday nights while your parents are cooking your tea, 6.30 p.m. You can sit down and do a little bit of English with me. Um, it's gonna be a little bit different to English Live. It's going to be um, something new and fresh and I'm really looking forward to sharing it with you all. And um, again, it's going to be 30 minutes in which you take away something um, that you can use in your everyday life, okay? Coming to chapter and verse is going to make you a little bit more clever, I promise. Okay, so uh, this is the end of the lesson. Thank you very much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you all at the Spellathon tomorrow. Wear your brightest clothes. I will be wearing my brightest clothes. Um, I've got a competition that I'm going to run tomorrow as well. In fact, if you're a super fan, one of the things that um, I'm going to include tomorrow is a competition to win this. And this is the actual um, sheet that I've used at the start of every single lesson for three months. So um, if you want to be in with a chance of winning this, uh, then come along to the Spellathon tomorrow. Have a lovely afternoon. Enjoy doing your task work. You have all been absolutely incredible. Um, you all deserve more than a pat on the back for the fabulous work and effort that you have um, put out there to the world over the last three months. See you all tomorrow. Bye.